Is there redemption without Jesus? Okay, um, I think uh, in in the context of uh, Christianity as a whole, for the most part, no matter what somebody uh, does or says or whatever, we as Christians typically, I should say typically, uh, would say that uh, there's still redemption to be had. That does not necessarily mean that the consequences are going to go away. However, there is redemption. But sometimes, even the world themselves, they uh, though they want the redemption, if they did something wrong, uh, they don't typically tend to give that grace uh, to some others. And, and uh, one story of which, uh, my, the homie and I, uh, Kamani Jones, we were on our way to Indiana for an event that I was DJing out there. And uh, we got to talking about a lot of different things. And one of the things that we landed on was uh, Chris Brown, the story about Chris Brown. And um, I just straight up asked him, I said, bro, like, is there a reason why he's continually getting blackballed? Like, is it still for the same thing? Now, uh, now, and, and both Kamani and I, we agreed on this. We do not condone um, by any means what Chris Brown did. Okay, for those of you guys who are a little bit younger, maybe didn't know, whatever the case may be, um, Chris Brown... Um, very physically uh, uh, um, attacked Rihanna, and uh, it was just, it was, the whole thing was bad, right? The whole thing was bad, and we are not discounting that, okay? Um, however, and Kamani was kind of making this point, is that, man, the dude was 18, again, still not right by any means, right? But he's like, what, 33, 34? Like, he, like he's in his 30s, all right? He's, he's somewhere around his th- 30s now, and people still, to this day, when you bring him up, they'll go, ah, oh, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't like that guy. I hate that guy. You know, I can't believe what he did. And it's like, well, wait a minute. If you look at all the NFL players, the NBA players, like all, all the sports, all the sports, these cats be doing the same thing, more wild things, whatever. And people go, oh, you know, but hey, it's okay. Like, you know, it's, it's, let him play football again. Let him play basketball. Like it's, I don't know. I feel like it's a weird double standard uh, and even worse when it comes to in the church. Um, you know, somebody does something wrong in the church, and it's just like, ah, that's it. He's done. He's gone. Never again. All right? Leave him out, you know, to, to dry. Uh, it, again, there are certain things where, like, for instance, especially in church leadership, um, you may not be able to go back into that role that you were at before, um, whatever the, the, the issue was. Um, but to just kind of say, like, yo, I forever hate this person? I don't know. Now, that's was something that has happened a while ago. Now, talking about Dwight Howard, I don't know if you guys know the story about uh, him, but we're going to get into this video, and, and uh, Ruslan, I'm going to rea- react to one of his videos. Uh, I feel like he did a great job uh, tying this stuff together, but uh, I want you guys to kind of hear from him, and I'll, I'll give my thoughts as well um, on this. So let's go ahead and get into... NBA star Dwight Howard denies essaying another man. But there's a part of this story that everybody seems to be missing with not just the allegations of essay and then the subsequent revelation of being of the same sex LGTB persuasion. There is more to this story that I think a lot of people just aren't catching with statements he's made in the past to completely juxtapose this conversation. So that's the setup, okay? Um, he said that he was going to use the platform for Jesus when he first got into the NBA, and now we got to here, and obviously there had to be a whole lot of different things. And so kind of the reason why I even brought the conversation back up with Chris Brown, um, where I have to remind myself, okay, and, and hopefully, and I wish a lot of us would do this anytime we see um, anybody fall, rather it's those who are in faith or those who uh, maybe not are of the faith necessarily, but they did something really, you know, uh, what we would say really bad or whatever. Um, I, I, I would hope that we would slow down and remind ourselves that um, access to excess will always cause problems um, if your heart's not in the right place, if you don't have certain boundaries set up, like if there are certain things that are not um, uh, put around you for your protection, uh, as well as guarding you know, your heart, or scripture talks about guard your heart, right? If that's not the case, any of us, okay, and I've talked about this plenty of times, we're all one choice away from being whatever it is, okay? Um, being adulterer, being a murderer, being uh, a slanderer, being whatever it is, we're always only one choice away from being whatever that is. So now if you uh, zoom out even more and realize, yo, these guys like Dwight Howard, 
they might have had great intentions starting out, but then, and Dwight actually shares about this a little bit, um, but then it's like, yo, I get to have anything and everything I want at any point. And that, I don't think even, even as much as I would hope that I would not be that way, um, I, I don't think that if, if all of a sudden I had all this uh, excess, access to excess, that I myself wouldn't be in a similar situation. So let's go ahead and uh, and hear back from uh, Dwight on this. Role entering the NBA, Dwight says it was a daily struggle to stay focused on God. There was times where it was very overwhelming. It was like, man, this is so much, and everything is at my disposal. You know, all I got to do is just go reach, and it's mine. And, and I and I love the honesty that he uh, said, where it's like, yo, like I literally. Whatever it is, like I can't again. I can't even imagine. Okay, so this this one in particular, all right? Uh, so Atlanta, um, ah, I can't even remember what year this was. It was Man Up Conference. Um, long story short, there was uh, I believe it was from the New Orleans Saints, uh, but he got up there. It was a uh, ex football player, and he was talking about his story. And he was talking about how uh, he'd be back in his hotel room, and he would be darn near crying out to God, like legit crying out to God about trying to keep uh, keep his heart right, keep his mind right, because he knew that there were girls, that there were just, there were girls who were willing to uh, exploit themselves uh, in a sexual manner to anybody who wanted it, okay? Um, and so uh, he's like, he goes, there was even people that they would like knock on the door and be like, hey, it's okay, we're not going to tell anybody, like, like I can't, I can't even imagine that. Like you just going, you're gonna go to play a game. You go to your hotel room. You're trying to just live a life that uh, glorifies God. But these temptations are not only present when you want them, but even when you don't want them. I don't know what that feels like. I'm not really stating the the fact of you know uh, the fact that Dwight Howard, you know, is he gay? Is he not gay? Like what? Like I'm not. That is that is more than I really, to be honest, even care to discuss. What I really want to focus on is the fact that. Um, we ought to guard our hearts, right, is what I said. We ought to guard, guard our hearts and also remind ourselves that no matter what anybody chooses, whatever lifestyle, whatever uh, actions, the consequences, we can't, we can't avoid them, uh, but there ought to be redemption for them. And a lot of times, that's not the case. But let's go ahead and get into uh, Romans 8, 8 1. Uh, so, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So the very first question I had asked was, is there redemption outside of Jesus Christ? So in the Christian worldview, no, in the in the certain in the sense of the eternal redemption. Okay. Now what I'm kind of talking about too is the redemption of just like, hey, like allow that person to grow. All right. The the Chris Brown at 18 year old is not the same Chris Brown, you know, at the age he is now. Which if that, you know, if that was the case, then hey, it makes sense. Okay, it makes sense why people still, you know, don't like him or whatever the case may be, but I don't think that's the case. Okay, so uh, verse two, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have and in that body, God declared an end to sin's control us by um, control over us by giving His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would fully would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. I want you to take that in. All right. I'm going to say that one more time. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, think about sinful things. If you want to know why you are having a hard time, you are struggling with trying to figure out why you keep relapsing or, or, uh, why you just kind of seem to always choose the wrong thing or whatever. I don't know, whatever it is that you might be struggling on. You might, you might try to figure out, yo, am I actually trying to like kill my sinful nature or am I continually giving into it? Because if I keep giving into it, scripture says I'm going to keep thinking about them sinful things, right? I can't, I can't say that I want to, you know, be a certain way, but then keep thinking about 
certain things because I'm, I'm going to just keep doing whatever it is. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. That does not mean, that does not mean that you're never going to have a, a, a bad thought if you really give your life to the Lord. Um, it, it does not mean that uh, you're not going to, um, that you're not going to uh, have to struggle with those things just because you have the Holy Spirit in, in you, okay? But it does mean that now you have the power to overcome. That does mean you don't have to allow that uh, to be the situation. So let's continue reading. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Left or right? That's all I'm saying. Left or right? There's a fork in the road. Can't be both. Can't be a little gray area. Okay. All right. There, there is no like middle road uh, that you can take. It's just saying one way or the other. All right. Keep it simple. Um, verse seven. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. Y'all, I think sometimes we don't read scripture slow enough. I mean, you read that sucker slow enough, and you're like, oh. Oh, dang, that's pretty clear. All right, that's pretty clear. Um, Verse 8, that's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Whoo, let's go. Listen, I don't know about you. I'm trying to please God, okay? And I know how much um, of my own sinful desires and all that that I have that I struggle with and that I got to give up. Uh, But if I really want to please God, I know I've got I've got to cut them things off. I've got to get past it. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk in another video more about that, but verse nine, but all right, this is for the believer. All right. Those, and this is why I said, you know, redemption outside of Jesus, eternally speaking, no. Okay. Um, but those of you who are in Jesus, here's what scripture says, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit. If you have the spirit of God living in you, and remember that those who did not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. Ouch. When it comes to just our sinful nature as a whole, right? When tie, Tying it back to the whole story with Dwight Howard and everything else. His heart was right. Okay, I want to go in here. I want to go into NBA. I want to tell people about Jesus. Um, then access to excess. And not only that, okay, so that was... That's definitely a huge thing, right? But then you also have, um, well, the people around me. Like, this is all they do. This is, everybody feels this way one way or the other. Uh, Everyone else does this. We really have to reflect on, um, are we setting up boundaries, right? Do we have healthy boundaries? Are we uh, being held accountable, right? Do Are we allowing people in our life that they can hold us accountable um, so that if and when we do something uh, that they are able to be there to call us out. Um, also, for those who are like, you know, but I keep going back to the same thing, and, you know, is it is it because I really want to give in to my sinful nature? No, maybe not. Maybe maybe you're trying really hard to fight the sin, but the problem is, is that all you can think about is the sin, is fighting the sin. Well, if I'm going to continue fighting the sin by thinking about fighting the sin, it's going to be a hard fight because all I could do is think about the sin, right? It's, it's a really dumb circle to be in. So what do you need to do? You need to replace the sin with something else. And I'm not saying another sin, but what I'm saying is that maybe if you are struggling with uh, lust of some sort, um, rather it's alcohol, uh, you know, uh, women, uh, guys, whatever, whatever it is that you're struggling with, you have to go, you know what? I could go to work out at this gym where I might struggle some more, um, or I can replace that time that I work out there and then maybe go to the park with a friend of mine and we'll do some kind of workout there. Like, I, I don't know. Like you, you have to figure out what kind of replacement it is. All right. Uh, if it's a, if it's another thing, if it's another kind of sin and the way that you replace it is that you go for a walk, just you, you would be, up, you'd be blown away how much just physically going outside and doing something would change your perspective on something would allow you to be able to uh, be freed from whatever that is. Now, that's just a thing, right? That's just a step. So, uh, but replacing the sin is got to be something that you want to do, all right? Uh, if you're not replacing it and all you're trying to do is just avoid it, um, there's a good chance that given enough time, you'll feel weaker and you'll eventually end up falling into that pit, um, a pit again. So, uh, and then uh, lastly, you need to fight. 
you got to actually fight. If you're saying, I don't want to chase after whatever the sin is, you have to for real, for real fight. Okay. I'm not, I don't do UFC. I don't really care for watching people, you know, beat each other up or whatever. Um, but if I'm in a fight, okay. And I want to fight for my life, right? If I'm getting attacked when I, if I want to fight for my life, I can't just like somewhat throw a punch and be like, ah, oh, it didn't work. And then just go take a beating. Okay. I can't just, uh, uh, somewhat try to push them off of me and then realize, oh, they're so much stronger. Their grip on me is so much stronger. And then just give up. We wouldn't do that in an actual fight. Right. But spiritually speaking, we do that. Uh, we, we try to pray and that's great. And that's huge. Like we should definitely do that. But then we don't do anything else. And so then we get punched even harder by our sin. OK, whatever that sin is. Right. Um, you can say with your lips all that you want about wanting to not sin anymore or uh, fighting whatever the temptation is. But if you are not really worth uh, I'm sorry, if you're not willing to to actually put in the work to fight the good fight so that you can flee from temptation, then you haven't really come to grips with the fact that that thing is actually a sin. That thing is actually something that you need to let go um, and know that according to Scripture that, hey, if you're in the Spirit, okay, if you, if you truly have the Holy Spirit in you, um, you're going to be thinking more about spiritual things, okay? And if not, then you then you got to stop. You got to stop allowing yourself to be in situations and places and uh, hearing certain things or whatever, um, because then you can't fight. That fight is an uphill battle for no reason other than the fact that you will not let go of it. So um, with the situation, to tie this all in, with the situation with uh, D. White and everything else, it is not necessarily... Um, something that I want to focus on as far as like what his specific struggle is, uh, but what all of our struggle is, which is if we had access to excess, we would be in the same boat. So humble yourself. Okay. Chill out before you go. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that. Okay. Um, we should be praying for them. All right. We should be praying for people like Dwight Howard, who came with the right intentions, who had a background of uh, being in the faith. And then because of circumstances, situations, surroundings, access to SS, whatever. Now he, for the most part, no longer is trying to live that life. Well, how about we as believers pray that not only would the Lord work on his heart, but that he would surround himself just with the the, the access that he has to anything sinful. He also has access to, to people who uh, could really help him in his life and in his walk. Uh, with Christ. So, hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and of course, share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos. Till next time, grace and peace. Adios.